brought to you by the Every Dollar app. Start budgeting for free today. From Ramsey Network, this is The Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create amazing relationships. I'm Ramsey personality George Campbell, joined by the incomparable Jade Warshaw. That's right, best-selling author of Money's Not a Math Problem. And we're going to be taking your calls today about your money and your life, and it could get messy, and we're going to give you some advice you may not like. But at the end of the day, here's what we want. We want to see you win. We want to see you have more peace in your life. We want to see you build more wealth than anyone has ever built in your family to break generational curses, to finally just go to bed and sleep and not be worried about what's going to happen tomorrow with the bills and how we're going to accomplish that financial goal. We want to show you a proven path to get there. So give us a call at 888-825-5225, and we will do just that. Alex kicks us off in Dallas, Texas. What's going Sorry, Alex, what's going on with you? Oh, not much, sir. How you doing? I'm doing I got choked up already. I'm very emotional <laughs> today. So we gotta watch out. How can we help? All right. So in a nutshell, I bought a home last year uh for me and my daughter, and then I met someone and I am looking at getting engaged and she is talking about wanting to put forty thousand down to help pay off the home faster uh she's the one that pointed me towards uh financial peace and all that but um my line of thinking of is this is my debt and my mess to clean up and i just wanted an outside opinion on if i should let her do this or not so she won't you're you're are you guys engaged yet uh plan on popping the question here probably within the next month or so okay Ooh. well hopefully she's not listening or else she just got a spoiler um in this yeah go ahead jade so just to clarify you have the home the first home was with your daughter i have a four-year-old daughter okay that oh, got got you okay so yeah. how much do you owe entirely on the house just over a hundred and thirty eight thousand and so her putting the 40K down, is that just her to be like, this is going to be ours together? Like, what's her what's her motivation behind that? Just to help pay off the debt? Uh, just to help pay off the debt. We also talked about possibly refinancing to add on. Um, but then the 40000 is what she has been saving up for a long time now to buy her first home. So what would happen if after you guys got married, you guys decided how that 40,000 was best spent, whether it's to put it towards a mortgage or some other thing that, you know, you might need a to renovation. Have... Yeah. How's that hit you? My line of uh, my line of thinking is it's a it's a three bedroom house. We've had the discussion about possibly having more kids and if that happens the house i'm in now is not is not big enough for ah. that this feels like a very future decision because this doesn't have to be your forever home together either she could move in uh so let me play out how i if i was advising you guys kneecap to kneecap i'd say hey let's wait until we have the document from the courthouse we come back from the honeymoon we combine the bank accounts now let's talk about what to do with our money so that I don't think anything needs to happen right now. I agree. Until you guys are officially married, we don't need to combine any of our right. finances, any of our savings. Once she's there and she's your wife, then we can say, all right, we want to stay in this house. Let's pay down the mortgage down to zero. We can roll all that equity into our new home down the line a few years from now once we actually run out of room because we actually have a kid there. That's when that decision should be made. Okay. So I don't know. I don't know the urgency of her like throwing all her savings at a house she doesn't own, because I'll tell you, I hope and I think it's all going to work out perfectly. But the calls we take on the show is when everything didn't work out perfectly, and now it's an ex-fiance who has forty thousand dollars stuck inside of the equity of your home, and now there's a big legal battle. And so it is very unwise to mix finances before you're married, before you have legal protections, right, before you've really right. combined your life. Yeah, uh, she had just brought it up of, you know, after we were married, that's what she wanted to do. And I just kind of hit the panic button, I guess. Well, after we get married um, is a great sentence. That changes everything. 
Yes. And so I would, you can start to make plans. Just don't make any actual moves until you're back from that honeymoon. But yeah. I hope it works out. And congratulations to you. That's exciting. That is exciting. Nothing's a man on, on the fire. cusp of proposing. Oh, yeah. Nothing Hopefully she like didn't it. hear this. Well, I think she knows it's coming, it sounds like. It isn't going to be no surprise to her. The names but. were changed to protect the yeah, innocent. innocent. All right, Doug is in Atlanta, Georgia, up next. What's going on, Doug? Hey, guys. Really appreciate what y'all do. Um, I am starting medical school in August, and I've never been in debt in my life. And uh, I looked into different types of loans that I could uh, get to pay for this. Um, and it seems like the smartest decision would go for the federally unsubsidized loans um but it seems with the interest rates um it's going to be quite a bit of money taking out and i've listened to y'all show for a long time and i uh the idea of going in debt for the first time is really scary and um so essentially the the total amount of cost or cost of tuition plus cost of living i can take out is seventy three thousand dollars tuition is around 44 and the way the loan situation is structured it's two separate loans you can take out for the first cost of the tuition and the second cost up to $73,000 for a total amount of 73. Um, I have some funds saved up, but I'm not really sure how to go about this. What do you have saved up? So I have about 30,000 in cash and another 30, and uh, it's in a high yield savings account, yielding about 5%. What a life. And uh, and the other um, amount is in investments, but it's not a retirement fund. What? How much um, is in the investments that's not retirement? About, about thirty thousand as well. So, um, from so you got ninety thousand bucks uh, just laying around? No, no, no. it's uh, about sixty. Okay, sixty thousand laying around. Okay, there's your answer, my guy. Uh, we're not gonna um, we're not gonna tell you the best debt to take out because we don't think that there's a scenario when it is best to take that's out. That's like debt. saying, what is the best Nickelback CD? <laughs> I don't know that I could tell you honestly. <laughs> no, I totally hear you on it. I just the looking long term for. I'm just kind of scared to completely liquidate all that. Um, well, yeah, I had that. That's point. my question for you. You called with a question for us. My question for you is, why is it more uh, appetizing for you to take out debt rather than just pay cash and be done and done with this? Is it, I mean, with, totally makes sense. Um, but the situation is, is that the tuition for medical school, it's, that's yearly. So um, it's 43 a year. Okay. And then for living and things like that. So it's over four years of medical school, and I won't be even making any type of income until residency, which will be essentially five years from now. But the good news is you have the better part of that for two years. I mean, you've got you could 30. Cover, you could cash flow the half of this, is what we're saying, with the money you have. Mm -hmm. I see. So can okay. you come up with well, another thirteen or 15000 within a year's time? I think that you could. And then get ahead on the next year prior to that. And if you have to take a semester a break in order to make this happen, the point is don't go into debt you. when you've got time and you've got money, which are two really good uh, resources to have here. And you have I, any help from family? Um, not really. Uh, that's kind of at this point is, is like everything is on my own. Mm. Man, that's real tough. If I'm you, before this semester starts, and even if you can put it off a semester, I'm stacking up as much cash as I can. Because if you can come up with a, a little bit more cash to make this work, you're going to be able to cash flow this whole thing, which I think you can. Thanks for the call, Doug. This is The Ramsey Show. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm George Campbell, joined by Jade Warshaw. Well, if you're looking for something fun to do in less than a year from now, check out the Live Like No One Else cruise. Uh, uh, okay, that was really good. I legit was like, we got sound effects? Every Is time. Joe in the booth hitting the sound effect button? Nope, that was just old Jade. <laughs> that was pretty good. If you weren't aware of what that was, that's the, uh, the ship horn? I don't know what it's called. Uh, yeah, the ship's horn? Let's go with that. I feel like someone out there is like just glazed over and I'm going, this guy with his <laughs> ship horn. It's going to be Dave, all of the Ramsey personalities, seven days at sea for the ultimate debt-free celebration, March 22nd through the 29th. 
And on top of our whole crew being there, we've got special guests. We've got Stephen Curtis Chapman, Manit Chohan from the uh, Food Network, nice. uh, Dina Carter. We got comedians, magicians, you name it. There's so much entertainment on this cruise as on top of, you know, hopefully some transformational, life changing content from us personalities. George, I want to hear you do a set. A, a comedic set. Oh, Jade, I, that's that's called a tease in the biz. Oh, I'm working uh, on it. Oh, when? I'm working on it. Because okay. I got a captive audience who can't leave. I thought this is the time to try out this stand-up is the comedy. T- listen, you and a Speedo is not enough. We need to hear the comedy, George. Yeah, that's not funny. That would just send people get, get refunds. <laughs> So we won't, you won't be seeing that. But we, we'll we be uh, seeing some sites, Turks and Caicos, St. Thomas, Puerto Rico, the Bahamas. Hey. It's going to be a good time. And again, this is for those who are debt-free, meaning baby step four or above. So if you're in debt, I wish you could join us, but please don't because you got priorities right now. This is for those who... They're out of debt. They've been waiting to celebrate. You want to meet, you know, other Ramsey fans and the whole crew. We're going to do, I think, the Guinness Book of World Records largest debt-free scream on the Let's ship. Let's do it. I'm I'm here for it. So VIP upgrades already sold out. Most of the suites are sold out. Uh, in fact, many of the cabin types are completely sold out. So if you're trying to pick a cabin like one with an ocean view, you got to get your deposit in right now. This thing's going to sell out real soon. Book your cabin at RamseySolutions.com slash cruise, and we'll see you in March of 2025. Woohoo! Can't wait. All right, Charlie is in Everett, Washington. Charlie, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, I really appreciate you guys taking my call. How are you guys doing? We're doing great, man. How can we help? Well, I'm trying to get it directly to the point. I am drowning. Mm. Um, Paycheck to paycheck is a nice way of putting it. Um, I own a home. Um, My biggest... I guess mistake is an auto loan. Um, I'm about 20000 upside down on it. How'd that um, happen? The, well, I purchased the vehicle uh, about three years ago when I was making significantly more money. Okay. Um, a, recent, um, a recent and abrupt breakup with who I bought my house with. Oh, boy. Um, had me, because I, I drive truck and I did drive... Uh, uh, long haul over the road, and when the breakup happened, I switched uh, driving positions to a local job. Mm-hmm. And, and so I'm making uh, roughly, I'd say conservatively, about 4500 a month. 4500 um, a month, okay. That's and your how- take-home pay? That's take-home after taxes, yeah. Okay. What other debt do you have? So you've got this car, um, you're have, twenty thousand upside down on, and what do you owe on it, by the way? Um, fifty fifty two thousand. Yikes! And yeah, <laughs> and you're saying and it's it's worth thirty two? Yeah, roughly. Um, and so I've I've tried to sell it for about a month and a half, close to two months maybe, and there's just. I mean, I can't blame anybody, but there's, you know, uh, it's not going anywhere. At what price point? What were you selling it yeah. for? Um, I, I Well, at first I um, put it up, you know, basically kind of like a takeover payments. This is what's owed. And then uh-huh. um, I, I, I put a couple grand aside in, in hopes that I could maybe like pay the difference and that didn't go anywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so like, I don't know if I should just do like a voluntary repo on no, the thing. No, 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 no. No. We'll, we'll walk you through some options. Let's get through the rest of your debt. What else do you have? Okay. Um, well, I got two thirty left on my house, uh, fifty three on the truck, uh, one twelve thousand dollar credit card, a three thousand dollar credit card, and uh, I got the, my lowest one trying to do the snowball. Um, I got my lowest one down to about 600 now. Okay, good. And and that's all the debt. All right. So um, you, if we knock out the credit cards, all that's left is fixing this car problem. Now we just have our mortgage to deal with. Correct. All right. And so with 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 the truck payment, my my mortgage is just under two grand. It's 1828, and the truck payment is 979. Mm. And Oof. so just, that mortgage is between... eating your lunch a little bit right now when it comes to your take home pay, don't you think? It, it is. And so, um, and, and where I live, I, I looked around, luckily me and the ex are on, on good terms as far as, as far as the house goes. Um, she moved out. There was no, um, you know, 
I don't, I don't know really how to put it. She didn't. We her name wasn't on the deed or the world. mortgage. She didn't have any equity in this thing. Uh, she does. Um, she's not on the. How the mortgage company explained it is, I'm the primary, but she is on the mortgage. Okay. So what happens if you stop yeah. paying? They go after her. No, no, no. She she moved out, and that was part of my. And I don't know if it was maybe an ego thing, but it was. You know, in the heat of, you know, because like I mentioned, the split was uh, not mutual and it was very abrupt. And out of emotion and maybe ego, I said, okay, well, you want to do this? I don't. I'm not losing my house. So did and you so refinance? Moved, or did no, you get her name refinance. off the loan? Um, we are in the process of, of working those details out, but that is the end goal of, of getting her off the house. Okay. And so, um, but with the credit cards, one of my, the, the higher credit card, that's kind of eaten up my trying to do just the minimum payments, which on the, on the one, it's like $600 a month. And mm. what were you I, making I, before I as a, a trucker? Payment. Yeah. You mentioned you changed what? your trucking schedule in it to where now you're making less. So you're making less doing local. What were you making before? I was making about 120. How can we go back to that? Um, well, currently, um, I, I, I got a kiddo and animals at home. And so doing, going back to what I was doing is kind of out of the question for another couple of years anyway. Is the kiddo new? Um, no, no, no. She, she'll be, she'll be 18 in about a year and a half. So again, so, how does that change from before? Because you had the kid and the pets before. We're just trying to understand what made you made that make that shift and why you wouldn't go back to it temporarily to clean up this mess. Uh, well, the, the reason I was able to be gone on the road was because the ex was at home. And so when she left, I all, all the because when I was on the road, it was, you know, payday hit. I yeah. sent her the money and the bills were paid. When and does your 18 so year old go off to college or kind of do their own thing? Um, she's thinking about it. She doesn't know if she's going to go to co do college or not. And you feel um, like you've got to be home with her? Uh, to a degree, just because a lot of her growing up, I was on the road. And, and so it, it, it's, I'm, I'm kind of, I feel like kind of a rock between a rock and a hard place. Mm. And I'm just kind of, I, I feel like I'm, you know, doing minimum payments. Here's the deal. And you're, if you're going to, if this is between a rock and a hard place and you're saying, well, there's going to be a voluntary repo, probably can't afford the, the mortgage long term. I'd rather you go to work now for a year and clean this mess up. Because here's the deal. You get out of this credit card debt and we, we get out the uh, underwater piece on the car. Now we can breathe again. Mm -hmm. But you need to be making eight grand a month instead of four grand a month in order to make this work. Okay. Because to your point, even cleaning up these credit cards is going to free up six hundred bucks a month. I mean, what that's going to change the equation big time in, 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 with your numbers to have an extra yeah. six hundred dollars a month to put towards uh, this upside down car payment. So if I'm you, I understand what you're saying. Kids, uh, you know, obligations with pets. Pets, I could care less about in this situation. But with your daughter, maybe sure. it's you having a sit down conversation with her and saying, listen, I know I haven't been there. I have made a mess of things and I'm getting about the business of cleaning that up. And part of that is me cleaning up my financial life so I can be there for you. That's a different kind of sacrifice, but it's the one that'll stick with her. Seeing her dad get out of a mess and just own up to the mistakes That's and go, right. I want to have a different legacy for your future. Maybe you help her cash flow college, but you got to have money to do that. Mm -hmm. This is The Ramsey Show. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm George Camel, joined by Jade Warshaw. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Don't be scared. Give us a ring. We'll try to help you figure out what the next step is for your life and your money, regardless of where you stand and how long you've been listening. That's what we do on this show. Ashton is in Oklahoma City up next. What's going on, Ashton? 
Um, so we've got kind of a weird and unique situation. I like uh, that. In 2018, we went through Financial Peace University. Uh, we moved out of our rent house. We moved into a super small apartment, and we went hard. And we saved up enough money that we were able to get completely out of debt. And awesome. we That's were great. able to to um, start saving money to buy a house, which we did in 2020. And everything was great right up until I got sick. Oh, and then, how sick? I've had uh, really sick. Um, I started having a whole lot of neurological issues. Oh. In the last four years, I've had three brain surgeries, and oh I need goodness. another one. Yeah, that's so, that's beyond uh, sick. I'm so sorry, Ashton. <laughs> soon it's it's okay i'm just glad they know what's wrong with me at this point because it took them a really long time to get here but in the meantime i was no longer working my husband had to quit his job because he couldn't get me to and from all these doctor's appointments and help me take care of the kids and how many kids kind of in a situation three three kids okay so you're in the house three kids you've had these medical issues where are you guys financially Mm -hmm. after the storm Okay, so let's hold right before we get to that. So, when he quit his job, we opened up a company and we ran that company. We stayed positive the whole time. We, it was great. We were able to replace his income and we did really good just him running solo on his own. What year was and that? Then, that was in 2021. Okay. Tw- or, no, no, I'm sorry, 2022. Okay. In 2023. Another small company approached us and asked us if we would buy them out. I was like, yeah, we don't have the money for that. And they were like, well, what if we did an owner finance? What if we carried we carried it and you just pay the profits to us? Mm-hmm. I knew the company was super profitable um, because I had seen them around, and I felt really comfortable with that. Okay. So we purchased that company from them on an owner finance on the contingency that I do not have a minimum monthly payment. I only pay them 60% of whatever the profits are, and then we retain 40. And how long would that take before you've paid the full price? Roughly, we estimated that it was going to be around 18 months. The industry, because of the economy, has kind of tapered down a little bit. So I'm thinking we're going to be closer to about the 24-month mark right now. Um, I don't think it'll take us very long. It's it's also profitable. we so in all of this okay all of this that's going on of learning how to run a business and trying to deal with everything the surgery that i need um is really it's new to medicine um it's more popular in europe than it is in america and last in april we actually had to fly to spain to meet with a doctor who actually is leading the research on this condition okay and um there's a very good possibility that they're not going to be able to do the surgery here. While we do have health insurance, we do not, we can't use it out of country, and that's kind of problematic. What so would that it means cost? We've got a, about fifty thousand dollars. Ooh, yay, yay! Okay, and do you have <laughs> yeah. any money saved? Uh, we've got a little bit. I would say we've probably got about five thousand in savings right now. Okay. Um, and no debt. Uh, we, I have about $1,500 in credit cards, but to be honest with you, the credit cards are what we use for the business, just so I don't have to have people have a debit card and I can track their expenses a lot better. So each, we have two employees and each employee has a credit we card. We run so, a $300 um, million dollar company with company debit cards. Just saying. Yeah, it, just, it, makes, it, it just makes me nervous. Um, it makes I've me nervous because y'all are racking up debt and your health is surgery. on the line. I'm just saying debt is not adding any piece to your equation right now. So the can you tell us the is, urgency? Right. Sorry, mm-hmm. I'm just trying to, I want to make sure oh, we spend plenty of time with you. So y- you need to have the surgery. Can you, can you explain to us the urgency of the surgery? Is it like, Hey, I got to have this thing instantly or else oh, my I'm health. I'm going to go blind. Okay. How, how soon? I've got, uh, I've got like less than a year. Less than a year. Okay. So the surgery needs to happen within the next 12 months. Yep. Okay. Does it get riskier the longer you wait or is it just kind of there's the same thing? Ch- it's more of a chance that there's right now they feel really comfortable if they did it right now that my vision would return. Okay. okay. But if we don't know in the future if this will continue and if when they do the surgery, if I will get my vision back. Okay. 
Tell us about your assets. What type of vehicles do you have that you have paid off? I have one vehicle that's worth about $5,000 um, okay. that we paid cash for that I own outright. We do have two car payments. Um, we kind of got in a situation with a, one of the work trucks that we have to have a work truck and we couldn't afford to pay cash for one. And the other one was, it just wasn't financially reasonable to repair at this point. So it, it had just served its purpose. Those two have debt so, on them. So they're not assets. Um, but, anything else do you have that you could sell off? Because obviously place that we're at right now is the possibility of selling our house using the proceeds from the equity in our house to buy an rv and live in an rv for a year or two and just kind of do what we did well i we wouldn't do an rv partner. i wouldn't do an rv but it i mean your health is on the line few few things are more i don't think anything's more important than that so it, it's a possibility for the house yeah but just rent so my only concern with renting and that's kind of where why i wanted to reach out to y'all is that the rent prices are really more even for like a two bedroom apartment? Yes, are more than but our an RV, an it's RV is going underwater. down in value, and so you have to calculate both costs. You might say, "Yes, I'm spending X amount of dollars on rent," but you're spending a lot more upfront to buy something on debt that is going down in value when you do an RV. So you're losing a heck of a lot more money. You just don't feel it in the same way because you're accustomed to debt but trust me you're losing a and lot you're gonna more live money. with five people in an rv i've looked at so so we have about a hundred about a hundred hundred and twenty five thousand dollars in equity in our house if okay we were to fall out i think and... that where you're at and you uh, unless there's something that you haven't included with a fifty thousand dollar surgery coming up with no real assets other than your house you're you are against a rock in a hard place and because you do have a lot of debt between these trucks and you've got some other things going on with the business it could make sense for you to get your health in place you guys rent temporarily you get your financial footing back on because to what george said earlier the amount of peace you're going to feel going into the situation owing nobody nothing is priceless mm -hmm. then you're getting the surgery that you uh -huh. need you're going to be able to have time to recover without just this feeling of we've got this business and we've got to do this and we've got to do that and we've got a mortgage that we've got to cover. I think that for you guys, having a fresh start with fresh health is going to be a good move. Yeah, well, that's kind of that's kind of where I'm at. What is your household income? My... You're living off 40% of the profits. What does that amount to a year? We take home about 70000 and then I leave the rest in the business accounts. Okay. So you guys are making seventy. You have to pay all these payments. Here's what I would do if I was in your shoes. I'd sell the house. You have the equity, the 125. Use 50 of that for your surgery, if that's where you guys are going to go next, right? Right. Pay cash for the surgery. That leaves you with 75 plus the five you have in savings. Mm -hmm. And that becomes your fully funded emergency fund as we get through the storm, and then we rent. And then once things are back okay. to normal, we own the business outright, we're back to getting 100% of the profits, then we can look at buying a new home. Yeah. And mind you, it's not going to just be 50000 for the surgery because, I mean, you're going to Spain and your husband's going to and he's staying somewhere and there's flights and there's recovery and the trip back. So really make sure you price this out with that money from the sale no, no, of the that's house. An, that's, that's an all-inclusive price. All in. Okay. Oh, okay. Great. 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 So I no, love to hear that. Healthcare over there is tremendously, tremendously cheaper. Okay. Well, I, I wouldn't do the RV move. I would rent, even though it hurts, because right now you've been building all this equity and you're going to trade that and, quote, throw away rent. You're buying peace during a time where your life is chaotic. Yes, sir. And so I'm going to be thankful to pay rent to that landlord because I don't have to deal with all the problems. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I wish you the best in your health, truthfully, Ashton. I hope that this is all resolved and you call us back with a wonderful update. And uh, I hope the financial part will figure itself out. This is The Ramsey Show. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm George Campbell, joined by Jay Warshaw. 
Here's your friendly reminder as we head into the summer to come visit us at the Ramsey Solutions headquarters uh, just south of Nashville, Tennessee. So make us a part of your, your road trips, your flights, if you want to make a trip to Nashville. And uh, you know we'll, we'll feed you with cookies and give you a free mug, and you can enjoy the show on the glass here if that's what you're into. And lots of lovely people out there visiting us today from all over the country. Wonderful folks. It's great. Let's get to our question of today. Today's comes from Alyssa in New Hampshire. Yeah, she says, My fiancé and I are getting married next year and plan to merge our finances. We agree on working together after the wedding date to be debt free. Love that. He will be coming into the marriage with student loans and a car loan. I am budgeting with every dollar and my debts should be paid off by the time we marry. His financial advisor is telling him to use the avalanche method to tackle his debt and has brought up other financial suggestions that are not in line with the Ramsey method. Since our finances are separate now, it's fine. But how do we compromise once we get married, this is a great question. So um, first off, avalanche method versus debt snowball. For anybody listening with avalanche method, you're listing by interest rate. So you're considering the int- the lowest interest rate and you're listing them that way and paying them off. Uh, whereas the debt snowball, we list them by balance. We completely disregard the interest rate because we know that over time, um, honestly, the difference is negligible. And for most people, um, they get more of a psychological benefit when they're focusing on the smaller balance. They get quick wins. And there have been many studies that have shown that this is actually the best method. Yeah, Harvard Business, Time Magazine, they all came out saying, we agree with Dave Ramsey. This is actually the better, more, this this method will get you to success more times than the avalanche method. So. So now we're getting into the nitty gritty. His financial advisor is telling him non-Ramsey things. And I think here's the thing. Here's what I want to clarify. When we tell people, wait until you're married to combine finances, that really is the nuts and bolts of uh, bank accounts and debts and things like that. But you can still be talking about what your methodology for handling your money is going to be. And on that, I think you should be very detailed and very um, as as detailed as those conversations can be. Yes, we both care about paying off debt. Yes, here's what we're going to do exactly when we get married. So I kind of feel like the advisor's leading him astray. Yeah, and I, I'm concerned about this financial advisor. I might consider uh, firing him and finding someone else. But number, the, fi- there's the another fiance piece doesn't of this. see that it's a problem. Yeah, this whole compromise once we get married, I think what it's going to be is, you know, your your word versus his on what the better method is. And, you know, we have a proven plan. Millions of people have followed it. It works. This guy is carrying debt for who knows how long. And the problem is a financial advisor like this would say, oh, don't worry about paying off your debt aggressively. You know what? You should be investing that money instead. So invest with me yeah. and I'll, I'll sell you these products. And I'm a big fan of having a financial advisor in your life. There's a time and place and there's a right way to do it. And, uh, you know, we can help you find a trusted financial pro at RamseySolutions.com. I don't know that now is the time for him to be working with a financial advisor. He needs to get his button gear and be working, getting that income up and paying off the debt. And the sooner he is to debt freedom, but by the time you're married, the faster you guys will excel in your own financial journey. So I'd go through Financial Peace University with him and say, yeah. this is our this is premarital counseling. If you want to marry me, this is part of the deal. We're going to go through this as a couple, and you're going to watch every lesson with me, and we're going to talk about it. Mm-hmm. Hopefully that gets him on the same page. But that's yeah. a big, I mean, that's one of the biggest life questions. How do I get my spouse on board? How do I get my fiance on board? Yeah. It takes time. If you want to be my lover. lover. That's go. all. That That's all I echo. thought about when you said that. Spice Girls. <laughs> That's usually what's happening in Jade's mind, if you're ever wondering. <laughs> Nathan is up next in Reno, Nevada. What's going on, Nathan? How can we help you today? Hey, Jordan, Jade. Thanks for taking my call. I appreciate it. Sure. Um, so I left my job of about five years, uh, like two months ago. Uh, what had happened is uh, the management tree kind of kept changing. My boss's boss changed, and um, it just became kind of frustrating to work there. They wanted me to do things that uh, that I didn't excel at uh, or didn't go to school for, wasn't qualified to do. Mm-hmm. So eventually this led to me leaving. It was it was just getting too frustrating. Uh, I, wor- I moved to a new job where I work remotely, and... The money is better. The uh, everything's kind of better on paper. I I just really don't like this job at all, and it's been a super frustrating experience from basically week one. Um, now what what don't you like? It, um, the fact that it's I remote. Don't like or... the, 
that there's that. I don't like working remotely. I find it demotivating. Um, my boss is not a strong leader at all. And because of that, we've been having, um, I, I guess, professional disagreements <laughs> frequently. What do you do uh, for It's not the nature of the work. Yeah, it's it's not. Well, it's a little bit the nature of the work too. So I, I am a uh, a programmer slash uh, database professional, um, and they kind of sold me this dream on this job to say that you know we're very high tech, we're very fast moving, and I came into this job and I I realized very quickly what they meant by high tech and, and fast moving was uh, spreadsheets, and um, I feel like I've kind of checked all of my skills at the gate coming into this job so you're bored and so i i'm bored yes oh, okay man well, so we can't what, stay here <laughs> what would light you up like if i snap my fingers are you in an office and you're doing this you know are you in database administration what's the sort of goal if, if i could put your role on paper yeah. yeah so what would light me up is so i really like the work i did at my last job just not the management i love working with databases and scripting data pipelines things like that Mm -hmm. And so that would make me very, very happy. And I don't, I don't see that. And you don't think that job. exists locally? Um, it sounds like you want to be in person or at least have the flexibility to be in person. Yeah, it, it doesn't really, there's not a lot where I am. Um, I know my, my location was listed as Reno. I'm actually in Elko and it's a, it's a really small town. There's not a lot of options here. What's keeping you there? Yeah. What was that? What's keeping you there? Um, I really like the town. Um, other than that, not much. We, no we, family? I mean, we have family here. There, there, we have family all around uh, here. But When you say uh, we, are you married? Do you have a wife? Yes. Yes, yeah, sorry. I have a wife and okay. a child and another one on the way. Just okay. Congrats. What's your too. wife do? <laughs> uh, my wife is a stay-at-home mom. Okay. okay. Well, you, you've... We can't have the cake and eat it, too. So we've got to decide, is this where we want to live? And if so, I've got to be okay with, A, working remotely, doing the work that I love, or, B, I'm going to have a commute getting to whatever lo locale has the you know the work that I want to do, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So there's going to be some level of compromise in there. Either I've got a 45-minute commute, but I don't mind because I love it, or, you know what, if I just had the right boss, I could do this remote work thing and fly out for the company you know, yearly meeting whatever. And so I think we need to start looking at other options. And my biggest worry for you, Nathan, is that you go with you. And so my worry is you go to the next job and you go, oh my gosh, this one, the boss is this way and the work is this way. And I'm just worried you're going to fall into the same trap. And so at some point, yeah. it's kind of like going to college. You kind of get what you put into it. And if you excel at every opportunity and you've got the right attitude about it and the work, the you know, management's not toxic. I think there's a lot of opportunity wherever you are to grow and excel. And so that's, I would do some homework and a little bit of soul searching as well to figure out what's next for you, but I would not quit until you had that next thing lined up. Okay. I don't want okay, you going back you. to the old job. There's reasons you left there, and for right. those same reasons, you're probably not going to like it once you get there. Okay. Even if they would have you. I don't know if they would. Plus a pay cut, it sounds like. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, just a little bit. So unless um, you were hired into a management role or something where you went, hey, I want to lead people, it doesn't sound like that's you. But you know, you have to go and, yeah. and step up an opportunity, not down. Is there any way, and this is okay. just me throwing this out there, is it a large enough company where there might be a move laterally where you could go into the database thing and you, maybe you're working with a different leader? Yes. Yes, there is. I'd, I'd explore that. And I don't know if your leader's the person you would go to for that based on your relationship. <laughs> right. Hey, I don't really like yeah. working with you, but the other guy seems great. Um, <laughs> so, you know, be be kind, you know, treat others the way you want to be treated, but yeah. also don't settle. Nathan's life is, is precious and it's worth more than just staying at a job you hate. I'm going to send you Ken's new book, Find the Work You're Wired to Do, which has the Get Clear assessment. I hope that helps you, Nathan. So hang on the line. It will help you out. That puts this hour of The Ramsey Show in the books. Thank you to Jade Warshaw, my co-host, all the folks in the booth keeping the show afloat, including Kelly Daniel sitting in for James Childs, our producer. And you, America, will be back before you know it.
Eric is in Albany. Hi, Eric. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you taking my taking my question. Sure. What's up? So, I I I, I keep getting into my head and wanting to liquidate all my investments and pay off my mortgage. Um, and I, I, I kind of know that like mathematically that's probably not the right choice, but like I feel like it would be a major pressure reliever and then to be able to go back through and just use all my discretionary cash to start going back in and, and rebuilding my portfolio. Mm-hmm. So how much do you have in uh, your portfolio? Uh, I have in my stock portfolio, I have where's uh, $180,000. Did you say 180 or did you say 80? 180,000. Okay. And what's your mortgage balance? My mortgage balance is like 170. Okay. All right. And those are the, the portfolio you're discussing is not in a retirement account, correct? Yeah, it's a taxable account. Yeah. Okay. And you're debt free other than your home? Yeah, for the most part, I have I, you know, I have a credit card that's got a very low balance on it that I literally just charged last month that I get paid off by the end of the month. Okay. And what's your household income? Uh, free tax, about 260 Good for you. Well done. How old are you? I'm 40. Okay. And so, uh, the, so you're saying that mathematically it doesn't make sense, and I would even challenge that part. I think mathematically it does make sense to pay off your house. Um, well, we bought we bought my house in 2012, doesn't and matter. Um, we we got we got like three and a half percent interest on it. So at yeah. this point, and we've overpaid on it ever since, and, and paid biweekly. Yeah. And so at this point, I'm like not really paying any any interest on it, and what interest I am paying is is minimal um, versus the returns that I've been able to get in the stock market. Yeah. Um, you know, but you've not factored in risk, right? There's no math for risk in your formula. And not factoring in risk mathematically is a naive formula. Mm-hmm. And um, so here's what we know. We know from the data of studying millionaires that the typical millionaire does two things that causes them to get to their first $1 to $5 million, that they get out of debt, house and everything, and they build their 401k and their Roth IRAs and good growth stock mutual funds. The number of millionaires that we asked that said, and we said, okay, did you leverage your home in order to invest in stocks, and that's why you became a millionaire? The number of them that say that is very close to zero. They say stuff like, well, Lord, no, I got out of debt. Isn't that interesting? So the formula that you're proposing is mathematically correct, um, is not used by hardly any millionaires to get to millionaire status translation your formula is wrong so eric would you take out against your home a hundred eighty thousand dollar loan to invest into single stocks well you know if it if if that were all i was doing for for a living yeah sure why not but if you were day trading um, for a living basically uh, yeah. Um, I, you also yeah, probably so. wouldn't be sleeping at night. You'd lose relationships because you'd be staring at these numbers, making sure they no, go up all the time. You're, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right about that. So there's a piece of this uh, where, just, man, I can feel that you're craving that piece, but you're stuck on the starry eyed, but what if I got this return on that money? Yeah. And the guaranteed return in your house, I think, is way more valuable. So here's what I would do. You called us. And so uh, really, really simply, I would cash out the stock and pay off the house today. Now, then I don't have a house payment. I have an increased stability at the very foundation of my life and my financial plan, because I, you, you cannot grasp and you actually can't mathematically capture that. It feels different to walk through your backyard with no shoes on. The grass feels different when you don't have a mortgage. You cannot capture that. You cannot capture what this does. It, that the stress release, even if it's minor, what that does for your relationships. You cannot capture what it does for your boldness and your excellence in your career. Uh, and all of those things over time, the math actually plays out that people of means, people of wealth, actually do not 
take out home mortgages to trade and sell, buy and sell single stocks. Those are called day traders, 78% of which lose money and um, lose a lot of other things while they're doing it. So Georgia, You only hear that, about the ones that win. And, well, and, you know, and they're always temporary. Because, you know, it's the same thing as playing the slots. Oh, I won at the slots, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's how they built those casinos, okay? Not by you winning at the slots, I can tell you that. So mathematically, just because you hit it once doesn't mean you're going to. So all of that to say, Eric, I'm going off the data of the 30 years of doing what I do, walking alongside people, watching their lives transform, watching their relationships, their careers blossom, uh, and their portfolio, because when you don't have a house payment and you make $260,000 a year, you can build up 180,000 bucks really quick. If you want to screw around with single stocks, won't take long at all. So good question. Thank you for calling pay off your house today, sir. Yeah. The whole end goal of both of our discussions is build wealth. The question is what is the best path to do it? And we have found that doing it with the least amount of risk possible puts you in a better financial position long-term. And so what we're saying here is you're going to build wealth Either way, you could lose your butt hanging on to these single stocks in the next week, depending on who tweets what, or you could have a guaranteed return with no house payment, making $260,000. You think you can build wealth with that situation? Absolutely. 100% of the time you can. So, uh, and 100% of the foreclosures occur on a home with a mortgage. So, <laughs> didn't have to do a lot of research it, on that. It'll one. come to you later, I promise. Uh, so, that's the idea, folks. That's the idea. What is your most powerful wealth building tool? Is it your home equity? Nope. It's your income. The person in your mirror is the secret sauce. For you to build wealth, for you to build a quality life, you're the secret sauce. You're the answer. No one's going to do it for you. And there is no magic pill that you've yet to discover. 